I don't normally show you these pictures of Summer Wells. Her hair is longer because these were taken over a year ago. I want to show you a couple of things that you're not going to see almost from anyone unless you go digging very far back five months ago. This is Candace Wells' resting face. She's not really showing much emotion. She's neither happy nor sad. She might be internally a little nervous. She's kind of a reserved person, but this is a good representation of what she looks like. This is a, cl a cut from an interview that Candace and Don Wells did um, at the end of June, I believe, because everybody cuts this little bit out and jumps right into the interview. Let's watch it again and watch what she says to the puppy. The first thing she says is, okay. And the next thing she says is, what, when the puppy persists in getting in her face? If you've ever had dogs, especially if you've had puppies, that's the kind of thing you say when the dog is a little worked up. Why might that dog be a little worked up? Well, that could be Lucky, Summer's puppy, and or that could be because the puppy senses that Candace is upset. Why is Candace upset? She's about to do her first interview since her daughter disappeared. This is a contemporary still from a portion of the interview she did with the behavior panel, and it was featured on the first episode on November 11th of the Dr. Phil show. One of the gentlemen on the behavior panel is asking her a probative question. Notice how vulnerable and apprehensive she looks as she thinks about how she's going to answer this question that makes her apparently very uncomfortable. And just one or two questions later, Candace Wells is in full-blown panic mode. She is ready to bolt here, and that's exactly what she does when she gets herself untangled from the microphone cords. I'd like to give you just a couple of details on the backstory of that scene. There was a woman who traveled with them, but that woman has no long-term relationship with Candace. She's not a best friend, not her mother, not a, no, no person like that. So who were the interviewers? On the left is Greg Hartley, and he was the man who asked the question. Kind of an imposing figure. And on the right is Scott Rouse, who has a softer overall bone structure, but still can be a little bit intimidating. Who else was in that room? We do not know. Presumably there was a couple of camera people for different angles and maybe a sound person. So let's ask ourselves, how did we go from this to this? The interaction just before she started trying to free herself from the mic wires included her saying, I feel like I'm being interrogated again, and why wouldn't she feel that way? She's in a room with predominantly men, and two of those men are professional investigators. Their job is to ferret out information that leads to um, developing evidence, if there is some, towards conviction of the per people they're interviewing. Police investigators tossed her house seven times uh, in their initial investigation. She's had strangers all over her property investigating and searching for her daughter. She's had the police department and Tennessee Bureau of Investigation questioning her about what happened, and she's had to tell the story as she understands it a couple of times now. Well, you could say to me, well, that's to be expected. Why, you know, why should that be a big deal? Again, this is a somewhat reclusive woman, and she, this is not her first time experiencing the, um, you know, interactions with law enforcement. 
more importantly, I think, to her particular story and the way she handles things is that she's had five solid months of YouTubers and Facebook shit posters and, you know, the general public up in her face, in her business, in her private life, accusing her of all kinds of heinous things without any evidence whatsoever. On top of that, Chief of Police Ronnie Lawson keeps reiterating everybody is a suspect, no one has been cleared, and that includes her, her husband, her mother, and the neighbors. And the neighbors are not happy with these people either. So I'd like to leave you with a concluding thought about Candace. I have not spoken about the parents in any way, shape, or form throughout the whole time I've been posting about this case to help get this little girl uh, back to safety. I am not defending any criminal activity by either of the parents or the grandmother, but I am pleading with you if you are new to this case, don't make snap judgments for the sake of this little girl. If you're new to this case and you're looking for information, you're going to find it. You're going to find a lot of information, but not all of it is accurate and a lot of it is just mean-spirited, unfounded accusations by people who should probably just sit down and be quiet. Here are the facts. Summer Wells is five years old. She's about three feet tall and 40 pounds, maybe a little heavier because she's a little bit older. She's got blonde short hair, blue eyes. She's been missing since June 15th out of Rogersville, Tennessee. You're going to hear a lot of things about her parents, things that I have not discussed on this channel. But I want you to keep in mind if this is the first information you've stumbled across about Summer Wells. Maybe you are curious because you saw Dr. Phil's two-part series on this family and this situation. Keep in mind the picture of the mother that you will never see from Dr. Phil or anyone else cuddling a puppy. That's all I have for you today. I hope you are doing well. Thank you for joining me. God bless you and have a great evening.